Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there, and welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We we just we just both loved this picture. It was, <laughs> you know, I, I think consternation on the face is is the the emotion that's being exhibited here. You know, it just seems appropriate. <laughs> You know, and so this was a Patreon exclusive. We're talking about, obviously, what the title is there, and many people don't have a clue that it's actually in there, but it's in there. Oh, it's in there. It reminds me of some of those old commercials. It's in there. I know. We went there. We went there. I know. I know. So, again, that's a Patreon exclusive multiple times each week. Pretty much, uh, we will have Patreon exclusives. And meanwhile, we have Egypt warning of all-out regional war. Yes, it's just a matter of time. Uh, obviously, Israel is is pushing the narrative as, as uh, Lebanon right now is getting blasted in more ways than one. And, you know, ready for full-scale invasion. Again, this is part of that Greater Israel project, which we'll see. You know, it's it's so reminiscent of the words of that general that was saying back in 2001, uh, hey, you know, I was told they want to go into seven countries in five years. Well, it's, it's a similar plan um, and probably smaller uh, amount of time it's going to go really really fast and you will find that israel is going to be perhaps 10 times maybe actually 20 or 30 times the size it currently is right now and it's it's just a matter of when they trigger um uh, the rest of the islamic nations and their allies to actually go and uh fight backs and here you have somebody they're olive trees now out in the desert olive trees cutting down olive trees that's a satanic it's totally satanic it's totally diabolical this is the type of thing that is going on right now for people that have lived in a land for perhaps generations and what are they doing they're arresting him because he's protesting that they're cutting down his his means of sustenance, his olive trees with chainsaws and bulldozers. Uh, you know, seeing an act like that, that tells me, for one, they have no understanding of compassion or, you know, there really is no conscience there. Um, and again, they use all sorts of, you know, events to justify what's really going on. Uh, but there's no justification for it for anybody that has any sense uh, of compassion no i mean no it's 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 just completely uncalled for it's like you know where is, is there any sense of them drawing any type of line when it comes to morals and it comes to uh not being so corrupted i mean i look at this it's just heartbreaking there's no justification to it i i can't see anyone standing up to justify something like this it's just some things in life is it's just not okay no you know and and they'll say uh well again you know that might be somebody from hezbollah or hamas or what have you and the reality is again the system will label the indigenous people of an area terrorists uh, while the system itself is 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 absolutely completely operating like that, and here you have Moscow's new ICBM blew up, destroying its silo in northwestern Russia. Russia has faced another failure in testing its RS-28 Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile. Now you know these will carry nuclear warheads. There's a massive crater uh, where this happened. This is um, potentially a big event. Uh, there's no news on whether or not this is radioactive at this point. Uh, many, many places were covering this. Um, you know, again, it's it's. I see comments by people, not necessarily on our channel, but I'll see other people covering it. And they'll say something so stupid like, oh, you're looking at Yahoo, you believe Yahoo. Well, how about the other 50 to 100 different sources that are covering this? And no, you never believe anything blindly. It's just, yes, we are dealing with very low IQs out there. I mean, this is the reality. And I don't say that 
in a way that's meant to be offensive. I'm saying it as uh, just it is what it is. As we have, again, the fluoridated water, we have uh, irradiated minds. Uh, it, it's intentional. They have lowered our IQs. IQs have been dropping across the planet for the most part. And you got to say why? Well, because again, they just need docile slaves. As Rockefeller himself said, I don't need a nation of thinkers. I just need workers. Yeah, absolutely. This is the reality. And so many people are so indoctrinated that they don't have a clue and they automatically condone things and they just pile on. And, and I was looking at comments on Fox News and there were so many people saying things like, go God, and boy, that really triggered in me, uh, remembrances of Bible studies uh, from the early 80s that I was in with the guy that was mentoring uh, me and my best friend at that time. And, you know, we were talking about uh, Armageddon and Ezekiel 38 and stuff. And, you know, he was like, don't worry, we'll be taken up to the clouds. We'll say we'll be safe. We'll be watching all these people suffer. And I said, what will you be doing? He said, I'll be just, you know, cheering them on. Go God, go get them. It's like, where's your compassion, you idiot? And this is the reality for the world that we live in. People are so indoctrinated that they don't have any compassion. They, they've lost it, and they don't understand the bigger picture. We have to take a step back and realize, you know, pain and suffering is a commodity for the dark matrix. It is. They, they utilize it to a very high degree. For them, the pain and suffering is very important. It's, you know, it's, it's their food. It's what they live off of. If people are not blind and in pain and if they're not suffering, you know, the controllers are not getting their, their food. And we know how much they like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's absolutely time to throw a little uh, cold water on things and, and, and shake the tree a little bit. We don't have to cut down trees that are providing food. Uh, you know, this is so, it's so insane what is accepted and recognized as being, you know, good or normal in this world. It truly is upside down. Many people are waking up to the fact that it seems like all of a sudden, they've awakened in a hellish realm that's because demons do run this show you know the the power structure on the planet is truly demonic and yet it is also extraterrestrial in origin and this is the thing you know you don't have to just say hey it's all angels and demons well you're trying to negotiate you're trying to say that there's no other life anywhere else out there and it's just us created by uh, uh you know a god and that's it just us angels and and demons and that's not the reality that's that's the reality of the dark age church that literally if you went against that you would be terminated for for being a heretic and yet, what do we have going on? Here's an interview with Matt Ford. This is from Challenge Reality on The Good Trouble Show. Lou Elizondo, who is an um, informant, basically a disclosure informant. Uh, you know, if I have to be honest, you know, he is in the system. He's still part of the system. He's just doing his part in what they have to do, which is they're going to have to give us disclosure because it's coming. It's, it's been underway for a long time, and if anybody would just take the time to look with an open mind, it's more than obvious. It's beyond obvious. So, talking about some, re some event coming related to UFOs, U UAPs, within the next decade, and basically he says, I can't go into detail, but I do know things that I can't talk about. Okay, yeah, sure. She's very generic. And meanwhile, this is from the same show. Uh, they're talking about the James Webb Space Telescope may have detected a mysterious object heading towards Earth, reportedly making course corrections, which could indicate a non-human object, apparently massive in size, no detail on how big massive really is, uh, none at all, unfortunately. It's heading our way, though. Are we facing a three-body problem type scenario? 
is the slow push for disclosure preparing us for a monumental event. It's trying to control uh, the narrative. So, you know, he says the second discovery was tasked to look at a possible incoming object, you know. And yet it's making course corrections. So obviously it can't be an asteroid. But then again, they're telling us an asteroid's coming into our, our, our gravitational field. It's going to stay there for two months and then it's going to take off you know, like they know all this already, um, you know, they, they just think we're idiots. Again, they've given us so much fluoridated water, they think it should be enough uh, to cover up the task. And also, they've indoctrinated us so heavily. So, yeah, you know, we, we, we see plenty of ships all the time. Most people don't realize these are actually ships. And yet the indigenous people understood this so clearly. This is why, you know, all the indigenous people with their traditions and also their spiritual viewpoint had to be wiped out. So it could be supplanted with the Abrahamic traditions and the science. And yet their time is short because there are other forces out there besides the control system on the planet that is going to push the narrative and there's many many beings out there um, that are not necessarily that far out of our frequency range um, where they're they're tired of what's going on on earth and they have been rooting for us and they watch what happens to us all the time and yet they they don't want to interfere so much uh, because of you know again freedom of choice and what you have to realize is that you have billions of humans on earth here that are putting out intentions and prayers that are in line with the control system, the dark control system. You know, when you say, you know, not my will, but thy will, and you don't realize you're not speaking about the creator of this universe, you're not speaking about your higher self, you're speaking of the dark control system, then you're giving your power away. Their biggest control is the religious control. That's their number one control system, you know, and then the politics and, again, the medical system, etc. But the number one thing is the religions. It is what really gives them their power. So something coming this way, course correcting, yeah, uh, we're not given the speed, uh, very vague, uh, yet, you know, he, he thinks that this is going to be coming out um, to a bigger degree from many sources in a more official way. Again, you could take that with a grain of salt, and I would. I wouldn't have even, you know, covered this. Um, however, Cindy picks up that there really is uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, that are kind of getting tired of, of waiting on the sidelines. And then we have this terrifying link between UFOs and nukes, Slade Bear. Uh, they may not come in peace after all. Over the decades, dozens of UFOs have been witnessed around nuclear weapons site. Former Pentagon investigator that we were just talking about, Luis Elizondo, said earlier this year the encounters could be re reconnaissance missions for a potential invasion. The reality is we're under the control of a system that did invade thousands of years ago. It's in our narratives. It's in our myths and legends. This is uh, the wars of, of the Titans against the gods. This is the Aesir and Vanir wars. This is the, uh, again, uh, Anunnaki invasion. Uh, this is the Asuras invading in the Hindu texts and fighting against the Devas. So when you have seen many, many reports of uh, nuclear warheads and stuff being deactivated by these beings, these, these are not negative beings that are deactivating. What they're doing is they're saying, you're not going to do what you did before. Because when they came in, they did absolutely uh, cause massive destruction. When you look to Sodom and Gomorrah, is it really because of the sins of humans? No, it wasn't because of the sins of humans. Because, again, they could view the entire U.S. as Sodom and Gomorrah and, and destroy it in a nuclear conflagration. Just looking at what the leadership has done, all, this, all the dirt that's come out uh, in recent times, all the celebrities and politicians that are very, very corrupt and have done things that are 
uh, I think the majority of people would say are, are extremely morally uh, reprehensible and say, well, no wonder, you know, they were all wiped out because look at who was leading them. And so they must have all been that way. When you justify Sodom and Gomorrah, this is what you're you're doing. You're you're saying the entirety of every person in there uh, was uh, unjust and corrupt and morally reprehensible. Well, the Bible tells us. Well, there you go. That is written by the victors, the ones that came and invaded. So they're giving you justification for what they did, and yet people can't figure this out. You guys, all the regulars, understand this. I, I see your comments. You totally understand. Um, but yet you will have those, unfortunately, we're not in the majority yet. We're still in the minority uh, as far as people that are awake enough to understand that the victors write the history. All you have to do is look to the Vedas and you'll see, you know, this article is called Colony Earth and the Rig Veda. It's from 11 years ago. It, again, the Vedas tell us uh, and the other uh, Hindu uh, scripts as well that there are hundreds of thousands of humanoid beings of different types just in our galaxy alone. This is something that was well understood. And this sunken super yacht believed to contain watertight safes with sensitive intelligence data is just again uh, another sign. This was another um, you know, millionaire billionaire that went down recently his, his family, um, unfortunately, him and his family are no longer with us. Uh, some other people did survive uh, the sinking of the super yacht, but intelligence uh, people are all over it because, again, there's information that they don't want coming out. The control system is demonic. It's demonic. And nuclear weapons were used in ancient times and other type of energy weapons as well. This is the reality that we face ourselves in. And so they want to make us think that it's negative ones that are going to come and invade us. But in reality, that invasion happened so long ago, and most of the world worships these invaders. Well, look at the system and look how backwards it is. So if they're telling us it's the negative entities that are going to come show themselves, I think, what do we need to do with that information? You know, you, you pretty much turn everything around. You know, that's not to say we don't use our discernment. We always use our discernment. But when it comes to the mainstream, I mean, they pretty much give themselves away every every step of the way anymore so we we have a lot of information coming in i've yet to channel but what i am getting a, a, a few things that i can give you from the top of my head right now there are entities there's another wave and i i keep seeing wave in a couple different ways and i'll talk about that but there's another wave of beings uh different beings who are going to be working just outside of our visible spectrum now there's many of us who will be able to see these beings and we will understand that they are working behind the scenes and they are doing things to uh, help humanity so many of us will be able to see them now many in the mainstream are not going to be able to see them and this is why they have been doing so many things like the the spraying and then just covering uh people and and their brains filling their brains full of the heavy metal toxicity so that um the pineal gland can't even function to see past but so many of us can see past so that's something I have been given. Will they be coming into the visible spectrum? We will see that as well. I fully expect an uptick in uh, sightings, many, many, many different types of sightings and uh, reports of seeing different beings. There's plenty of people that ha are out on farms that have kept their bodies clean, that have a good pineal gland, and they'll be able to see things and have, have uh, possibly have... Um, you know interactions with these beings now the wave the wave that i keep seeing so translation is a funny thing and i've explained that before i keep seeing a literal wave you guys and i, I don't really like that because i want to tie the wave to this other wave of consciousness and i want to tie it to another wave of beings that are coming in to to assist us and help with the awakening of the planet 
the wave is literal. It looks literal. I mean, it looks like an ocean wave to me. So I'm not exactly sure what to do with that part of the information. I'm not getting anything other than that. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm putting it all together to the best of my ability. And I, I think we all really need to go within and, and prepare. And uh, we're probably going to see some things. And many people will know what's going on. But there's more that probably still will not yeah when you again you know you'll have people say oh sure invisible and just look to the tiny little region that is visible as far as of the known spectrum that we have it's tiny it's a, a little fragment and you change the frequency slightly and things disappear and you change the frequency slightly and they manifest so yeah absolutely most of the beings uh, that are out there are not visible to us most are not and yet it is real when you yes go ahead. oh I'm sorry I, I also wanted to mention about the uh, measuring of human consciousness, the measuring of our frequency. That's really key in all of this because this is going to determine how much uh, we're going to be able to know and understand and how much, actually how much of the earth, and we did do a video on this, how much of the earth we are going to have access to. It depends on us. So uh, very important for each individual person to raise their frequency as much as possible because yes they are coming they are testing our frequency they are seeing where we're at and are we going to be able to have access to other parts of the earth that have been cut off from us for a very long time the kurukshetra war is the war in the mahabharata that uh, it's really all centered about and yet i've shared with you when i first read the bhagavad gita and this is going way back, really what came to my mind automatically, and this was as somebody that was still being raised as a Christian boy, uh, was, you know, the feeling of, you know, the real Christ, the real God was in there, and the real Creator was in there, and it was so strong. Uh, it was very, very interesting. And so, you know, this is going back to when I was a teen. And this war, according to some sources, left 1,660,000,000 dead. This was massive. This is at a time, again, that the, the world supposedly had maybe 100 million people on it at most. Again, the history is, is totally inaccurate. As you can see, the strength of the armies, this was, a, this was not just a little local war that happened in Pakistan uh, or you know, even over into uh, some of the other stands uh, you know, that we're looking at over there in Asia above India. Now, this was really a, a global war, and it was symbolic, so this is the rendition that we're given these stories are symbolic um so you don't necessarily want to take them literally but you want to also you know you want to look for the deep insights the spiritual insights etc because they're there um but also the fact that you know this is a representation of real history that's being passed on and really this war led to the Kali Yuga. This was the war in so many ways, I take it, as this was really a representation of the real invasion that happened on Earth. Now, they date this to 3102 um, BC, and, you know, in the end, uh, the being known as Krishna, which many people, you know, will also recognize that, you know, the root of Christ is in Krishna, uh, which does predate Christ, and it's said that the Dark Age, the Kali Yuga, began with the leaving of Krishna, and then no more of these higher extraterrestrials were going to walk openly amongst us and teach us, because that's what they used to do. And when we see the Asir Vanir War, uh, it's also kind of a representation of this. There is physical evidence 
of ancient nuclear wars or using some sort of um, perhaps laser frequency. I do think that they've used what we would take to be lasers and energy weapons to literally melt whole cities down into what looks to be rocks and sometimes you have this nuclear green <laughs> glass at the bottom of craters that we started noticing when we were testing more of our own nukes in this modern age again when you look to uh, the words of Oppenheimer himself and and the first explosion uh, you know they said um, you know it, it, how does it feel and and he was quoting again the Gita and 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 saying you know now I am death <laughs> because he did correct them and say this was the first blast in our modern times so, because this had happened before and he knew about this because again he's an insider's insider you know, working for the military to bring back these uh, weapons that and, and have them openly amongst humans that were brought here by the invaders which literally again when we look at this you know some of those invaders the 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 lower management literally did come from mars literally and when you look to mars mars was ruined by these wars that they brought there and so you know again look to nibiru and you'll see nibiru is basically ruined from the wars that they brought there this is part of a cycle that's well beyond the earth and there's many articles that have been written by many lay people and and people that are not lay people as well Pe many articles written by insiders whether they be insiders into the military industrial complex or uh, perhaps scientists that have wondered these things aloud uh, you know what happened in the past could it happen again well, you know, what we see is all over the world, you'll find these things. You know, the Sahara, the way it is now, is also um, because of the system. And it wasn't too long ago that it was full of rivers and lakes. They made it desolate. This is what Mars looks like. Many people have said, well, it looks like they're filming everything from Mars in New Mexico and Arizona. Yeah, because our American West has been hit with this type of warfare as well. Mohenjo Daro shows you, in my mind, um, how people were living before the controllers came here. They had no central authority. There was no kingship. Whenever people use these concepts and they talk about you know God as a king, that's not the real God. Because, you know, God on his throne, that's that's all what you're getting from the Abrahamic tradition. The The real creator is not like that. The real creator is, doesn't have a big inflated ego that needs to be boosted all the time. He doesn't need, you know, he, she doesn't need to have us on our knees worshiping them all the time. No, that's these little beings. That's these extraterrestrials that make themselves out to be. Uh, source or the creator of this universe it's it's not like that at all and Mohenjo Daro people were living peacefully it was a walled settlement um, but there was no um, there was no political organization somehow everybody got along they didn't have weapons storehouses they didn't they weren't living like we live in these days and they were wiped out and it looks like they were wiped out by this technology. I've also uh, shared the cities of the giants in Bashan, which coincidentally is in the area of Lebanon that's getting sh you know, blasted right now, and also into Syria, and also into Israel, where these massive cities of giants, and there are hundreds of these cities that only 150 years ago you could go into and see that people were living there in walls that were four to six feet thick in some places um, with stone slabs across the top and yet all the people were wiped out and yet the structures they remained it was only well after the fact that the system came in and destroyed the structures when we got to the point where we were going to be more of a global society again the system comes in and and makes these wars that obliterate uh, the evidence of the system and sometimes they use their own uh, technology which has been space-based and around us the whole time 
So I'll give you guys all the links. You know, Mohenjo Daro, ancient Indian c city destroyed by nuclear weapon about 4,000 years ago. Um, Vicky Verma does a lot of work on Twitter. Follow him over there. And yeah, you know, I mean, this this is just, this is what happened. It was the system that wiped it out. Um, a couple books I have by Bart D. Erdman. These are good books for those that are maybe um, Christians, but you realize there's something wrong with the way you're viewing Christianity. Um, I would strongly recommend getting some of his books um, and, and looking deeper because you know it's going to be a little bit more gentle and a deeper dive into you know what's really going on here as you can see this one jesus in the writings of the first century jewish historian josephus josephus by the way i do think uh, i am in agreement with some others out there i do think josephus himself uh was let's just say he was uh, francis bacon to shakespeare and in reality, uh, you know, many people do think that Francis Bacon wrote the King James Version of the Bible. And Francis Bacon is, again, a secret uh, society insider and also wrote the work workings of, um, you know, perhaps the one of the greatest writers of, you know, the last 500 years in Shakespeare. I mean, we all know Shakespeare were brought up with it. Well, Josephus, and we have a book with all the writings of Josephus, and it's the tiniest text you can imagine, and it's, it's you know, over a thousand pages deep. Yeah, Josephus, Josephus in my opinion, I, I am in agreement with others. He, he is basically the Apostle Paul. Well, he's, he's the person that's writing those works. The po Apostle Paul, again, uh, was an insertion um, by the system into making sure they can take over what was an organic movement and use it as part of the control system. Well, so so much of this is uh, trading places and um, putting other people in the place of other people, and Mike was talking about that yesterday, and I don't remember his exact words and how he put it, but I'm like, you really need to tell people this. People really need to know what you just said, and I'm bothered right now because I can't remember exactly how you put it. I just knew it's like people need these parallels. Do you remember what I was talking about? I think it was kind of about that because, you know, again, I... I in more modern times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, like give having someone write something and then uh, 200 years later saying that they wrote it or they didn't write it. I you know, if, 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 all right, let me give you this one. Let's say we're 300 years in the future and, and people are coming upon the wreckage of our society. Um, you know, they might view that the whole Star Wars phenomenon was real because they'll understand, you know, and from that standpoint, they're going to understand that there's always been this evil galactic empire out there. It resonates with us right now to this day. It resonates when we watch Star Wars. Why does it grab us so much? How about, you know, Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings? Why does that grab us so much? Because it is our history. It's just twisted and distorted a little bit, and it's it's retold. Like, when you look to the dwarves that, that he used, the names of, these are actual names coming out of mythology, Norse mythology. Um, so, even, like, saying Gimli and, and other ones... Um, it triggers something in us. There's a little bit of a DNA memory, and so we recognize it. But then, you know, again, it's retold in a story fashion that isn't necessarily exactly accurate. It's a story. Same thing with Star Wars. You know, will they wonder, boy, that Darth Vader guy, you know, I mean, he must have been something to actually see in person. Will they think he's actually real? Because, you know, again, they're going through the wreckage of our society and they're seeing references to things and they might not know which one was real and which one wasn't. And, you know, might not recognize that it was created by George Lucas. Um, after the fact, when we, when we look to the revisionist history of the invasions of, of the Europeans, which really is representing the system into the Americas, and then, you know, putting all the Native Americans in their tiny little um, 
camps <laughs> in some of the you know most infertile uh, lands and worst lands and wipe, wiping out their system and justifying it and then getting them to convert to Christianity because it is one of the control systems um, biggest tools modern Christianity there, there was an original Christianity which was lost and what was it like well you know again look at who was persecuted look to the Gnostics to get a, a closer idea and look to the Essenes um, you know perhaps even closer yet um, to, to get an idea of what was really being taught by the actual historical Yeshua so it's revisionist history and this is what they do they rewrite things all the time and you know when you recognize that pen names oh okay this is what it was um it was mark twain you know and so the writings of mark twain you know mark twain you know you might have somebody you know right as mark twain right now now he's been dead you know for i don't know 75 years 100 years whatever it is um probably a hundred years at this point he's been dead and somebody could write a book a Tom Sawyer book and you know under the pen name of making it out like he is Mark Twain this is you know pseudepigraphal but he, he's not Mark Twain Mark Twain's been dead but then Mark Twain really was Samuel Clemens that was even a pen name so Mark Twain wasn't even Mark Twain this is what's going on with Josephus. When you look at Josephus, and, and Josephus, there's going to be a series of videos. This, this has to be a series because it's so big. He is uh, the voice of so much of what we have gotten as far as our understanding of biblical times. And, you know, he was part of uh, a group of Jews that were supposedly fighting off the Romans and there there was a group of them that was trapped and they knew they couldn't get out alive so they made a suicide pact and they killed each other and he was a, one of only two people left that then at the end after everybody else was dead decided i'm not going to kill myself and so he ended up surrendering and then he became part of uh, the roman system and part of the control system well he was part of the control system from the get-go this is the thing, you know, when you look deeper, you recognize this. And it's also because he is one of the ones that says, you know, um, do you remember when the gods left? Uh, the gods were real. They were here, but they left and they're, they're not here anymore. Um, so it, it's, it's really interesting when you look deeper. So Bart, Bart Erdman, uh, a really good one for recovering Christians to go in and look. Uh, Michael Tellinger. Uh, has done a lot of uh, work on this and lived down in the realm of uh, Enki, <laughs> let's just say, Slave Species of God, God's The Secret History of the Anunnaki. We have this book too. Now, for me, um, this was a little bit duller because it was all the stuff that we, we all know um, very, very well, or at least I'm assuming that. So again, if this is all new to you, then please do, you know, check out Mike and Tellinger's book, Slave Species of God, because he has uncovered a lot of things, including giant, giant footprints that are four feet long. Uh, the fifth kind, Paul Wallace, he's a recovering pastor, and you know he spent uh, almost all of his adult life as a pastor. And did Jesus worship Yahweh? And this information is key, and many, many other fifth kind TV, uh, one hundred seventy-one thousand views. Um, I, I don't agree with him on everything, but I think this is a great place to start, you know, and, and he does a lot of work with uh, Matthew LaCroix and um, Billy Carlson, Carson as well and many others, including uh, Morrow. And I do think Morrow is, is very good as well. Um, he, he still would probably profess himself... Um, maybe as a Christian of sorts. I, he was a Vatican translator, a Vatican translator, and he's, he's suffering right now. Um, he is, it feels like he's deteriorating. Uh, the Bible does not talk about God. No, it's never been about God. It's about the extraterrestrial invasion. And as a Vatican translator, from the Masoretic Hebrew, Aramaic, and other ancient Greek to Italian, 
and to English. You know, here you go. Uh, the real the real translations here tell us this is an alien invasion. And now we're getting to the point where so many people understand this. Uh, as you can see over here, Graham Hancock, Gods of the Bible. That's a good one uh, from a year ago talking to Moro. So, yeah, you know, still the whole world is led astray, worshiping those that invaded us and made us slaves, at least in their own mind. You know, I like I like the words recovering Christian and recovering pastor. I mean, it's true. It's true because these people have been through a journey and lied to on top of lie, on top of lie, on top of lie, mixed in with some truths. And now their world is being cracked open. And I, I can tell you from firsthand experience, it is traumatizing. It's traumatizing. And it's so important to find other like-minded people so you can process and work through this information because it's just absolutely nothing shy of traumatizing and very, very difficult to go through. So uh, you know, this is what we're here for. We're here to help people walk through it, help people who are confused and they don't have anybody to talk to and uh, just work through finding their own, um, their own, their own truth uh, after being led for so many years under someone else's truth. It's like, who are you? What, what are the layers underneath you? If you peel away the layers of belief systems, who are you? And, and don't be afraid to be you. Absolutely, and get your exercise in. This little cutie is. He's, a cu he's doing his, his foot circles there. That's probably good for arthritis when he's really old. Right now, he's just getting ahead of the game. Absolutely, and Paul Wallace does have books. Again, Bart D. Erdman uh, does have books. Um, good stuff. Um, it, it's just overwhelming. I mean, again, you, you have to do a whole series of videos to cover everything that's in there um so you know again check it out expand your mind and 99 percent of the people that watch this will be the same group i know you guys get it so just pay it forward and let's waken the world so it won't go into another uh, global conflagration as this is so obviously what they are doing they're, again, using religion to get us to wipe ourselves out. Indeed. Again, source bless and namaste. Namaste.